Hi everyone, today's video is going to focus on opening files, opening external files in your application. And when I say application, we're not just talking about Access today, this is VBA. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, even Visual Studio projects, um, if they're VB based, a lot of this applies. So there's a multitude of ways of doing this. Some are more straightforward than others. Some offer other benefits versus others. And that's what we're gonna briefly take a look at today. Now I have a number of articles on my website because um, over the years things have progressed and I've developed more th things. But I'm gonna focus on three primary ones. Now the first one here covers the four main ones. So follow hyperlink, file protocol handler, the shell execute, and then there's also the shell object itself. So we're gonna look at those. And just to mention here, the shell object in particular, I also later created an article about the shell application deep dive, where you're gonna basically find the same function. It's written slightly differently and has error handling and conditional compilation, but it's basically the same idea. But if ever you wanna learn more about shell and other things it can also do for you, this is a good article to take a look at. And getting back to why we're here, so we have these four approaches and then a fifth one to add on to that would truly be using PowerShell. In PowerShell, if you're not familiar with it, with uh, anyway, the new releases and everything, is extremely powerful. It can do all sorts of things, gather information, change configurations, and open files. So we're going to look at how it can be done. So I will include the links, obviously, in the description below. So let's dive into it. Now I'm going to use my favorite tool for development purposes, and that's simply access. But do remember this applies to any other VBA application. So we're going to be working in uh, VBA for today. But obviously, this is something you can link to an event on it, let's say a button, a double click, whatever the case may be, however you want to manage it. I'm just going to use the immediate window. So let's look at the VBA. I'm just going to follow the order that they appear. There's no particular order here. It's just alphabetical, obviously. So in the first instance, I have the file protocol handler API. And it really is very straightforward, as you can see here. And typically, I like to add error handlers to everything. That's one of the reasons I like building functions or procedures around these things, is so I can gain the ability to add error handling. Um, but we take this, for example, and just as a demo, I know that on my desktop, I have a file, for instance, a text file. So we press this, and it opens automatically in the default associated program. I also know Let's copy some of this and we don't have to keep worrying about it. So we've got that guy. I also know I have a demo XLSX. So we can come here and you'll see it doesn't make a difference the type of file. It will open it in the default file. I know that I also have a image. And once again, it will open the default application for JPEGs and then show me my file that I requested. Okay, so as you can see, file protocol handler works seamlessly. It's one API and it's very simple to use. Another approach would be the follow hyperlink. Now this is a beautiful thing. It is integrated in I think all of VBA, I believe it's in Excel, uh, anyway, it's available. And it's very useful. You can open uh, you can open files, you can open uh, URLs, you can uh, use it to launch like an email if you want it. Uh, the list goes on and on. It's very versatile. And if we just try it, let's say on the uh, on the image, and we run it, you'll see the image comes up fine. 
if we do the text, that is fine as well. Now the issue with follow hyperlink is you can sometimes get a warning, a security message about certain files can be potentially harmful and it can be scary to some users. Uh, obviously for developers, when we're writing this code, we know that there's no issue, but I have had instances where I've actually had calls from clients and users where they get these pop-ups and they're all alarmed and wondering what the heck I've coded and what I'm doing behind the scenes. And um, this is one of the reasons why I used to love follow hyperlink because that security warning wasn't there. And then in later versions or security updates, things have changed and now you can get these pop-ups. So although it's very useful, very easy to use, I nowadays basically don't use it anymore because I don't want my users getting concerned and seeing security warnings when all they're doing is trying to open a file locally that they've linked to a database, for instance. So it's very versatile, it's very powerful, but getting those types of pop-ups for things that have been uh, trusted, it just makes no sense to me. Uh, PowerShell. PowerShell, if you look, it's a very simple command. So we're using start process, a file path, and we pass basically the file we want to open. And um, as you can see in my usage examples, it can be somewhat like follow hyperlink can be used for much more than just a file. You can use it for URLs, you can use it for email addresses, etc. If we take the command, and we copy one of our files and we run it, you will see it launches the file in the default application. And we can do the XLSX, the same thing will be true. Now, one thing I will say about the PowerShell, like I said, it's extremely powerful. It works efficiently and everything but we are pushing it out to a, a, another application. So there's always a slight delay with PowerShell for anything we do because we're starting up PowerShell and sending the command to it to manage instead of just getting VBA to do it directly. So there's always a delay. The Would I use it necessarily for opening files, even though I demonstrated it can be done? Probably not. There's more efficient ways, faster, better for what it is. Um, but there are other aspects of PowerShell that I use it for that even though there's a delay for launching PowerShell, the speed at which PowerShell does other actions is far superior. So in those cases, using PowerShell is advantageous. So it's a, you have to weigh your pros and cons here. In this case, probably not the, the first choice I'd use. Uh, shell application. Shell application, like I say, is very straightforward. Basically, we need to create a shell object, depending if you're early or late binding, and then we just use the open method. And if we use that, you'll see it opens it up pretty much immediately, and there you go. No warning messages, everything works beautifully. Uh, database, no problem, the database is open. Uh, the image, so it really doesn't make a difference. And just to demonstrate, like I have here in the usage examples, um, you can use it for beyond just files. You can use it for opening folders. You can use it for opening up uh, websites, URLs. So this is one of the ones that I tend to prefer because of its simplicity and its versatility, and you don't get any warning messages. Then there's the cell execute API. Now, once again, I know the code looks a little scary, but it truly isn't here. What we have is we have the API itself. Then we have the, well, as it says here, the, the state of the window when we uh, use it. So do we want it hidden, normal, minimize, maximize, etc. So you have these different options. Um, and then there's error states and things like that. And we come here to actually open it, to use it. And if we were to come here and open it, you'll see here I'm using the SW show normal, show the window normally when it's launched. You could use hide, you can do whatever you like for your purposes. And then here we're getting a return value. And if it isn't an error, we don't need to worry about it, but if it is an error, 
then we have different error messages returned. And we'll demonstrate that in a second, but as you can see, it opens. But let's say we put a file that doesn't exist, you're going to get that file not found because of here that error. And that's what all of these are here, file not found, path not found, bad format, etc., etc., etc. So you can extend this error handling and make it much more versatile to cover all the cases. I've used it for just the main ones. But this is another very viable option. Um, why do I tend to like shell application? I like shell application because everything is contained here. There's no warning messages and there's no APIs. So I don't have to worry about bitness. I don't have to worry about 32 and 64 bits and having different declarations, et cetera. And also moving forward with God knows what might come down the road. You know, um, this shell will work and continues to work and is very efficient. And it's very versatile because like I said, you can use it to find system folders. You can use it to open fold any folder you define. You can use it to open any file you define. You can use it to open any HTML URL you define. You can even, even though I haven't demonstrated, but in other case, you can even use it for starting emails if you want it. And it once again opens in the default application. On this computer, I have Thunderbird because I was doing some Thunderbird development. But it would open it in Outlook, it would open it in uh, Windows Mail, whatever the case may be here, however your computer is set up, but it will automatically launch it for you. So very versatile and it, it's simple. And I guess that's going to wrap it up for the subject of opening and uh, external files. Please like, subscribe, share. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, did I miss some obvious other method? I'm sure there are other ones, uh, but these were the five most common ones that I've used uh, myself over the years. And like I say, I now privilege pretty much the shell open. It's uh, simple and effective. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day, everyone.